Hey everyone, it's Nurse Sarah, and in this video, I'm gonna be going over premature junctional contractions, also known as premature junctional complexes. So let's get started. PJCs are early contractions that originate from a focal point around that AV junction rather than the SA node. So that's why we call them premature junctional contractions or complexes. And whenever they occur, they're gonna cause these random beats to appear early within that underlying rhythm. So two big things I want you to walk away with PJCs. Number one, they are premature early contractions that are just gonna happen within that underlying rhythm. Secondly, is that it's gonna have P wave issues. And those P wave issues that it's gonna have are gonna be similar to those junctional rhythms that we went over before. If you wanna watch my whole reviews on junctional rhythms, you can access it up there. So the issues that the P wave is gonna have could be any of the following. Number one, that P wave can be concealed. Hence, you ain't gonna see it, it's hiding somewhere within that QRS complex, or the P wave could be after the QRS complex. It could be before the QRS complex. Now, if it was before it, it's gonna be really close hanging out to that QRS complex, which is gonna lead your PR interval to be less than 0.12 seconds. And if you look at leads AVF two and three, it's going to appear inverted. Now you may be wondering, what's the difference between a PJC and those junctional escape beats? Well, it all centers around a pause. So with PJCs, we know that these are premature contractions that are just gonna happen randomly whenever a foci point in the AV junction decides to fire. So because of that, they're not gonna have a pause before the actual PJC. However, on the flip side, with those junctional escape beats, a pause is going to occur before the junctional beat. And the reason for that is because those escape beats are in a sense helping your heart escape cardiac standstill or cardiac death because your SA node is working too slowly. And so all of a sudden it's like, hey, you're gonna fire and it doesn't fire. So the AV junction takes over, but there's that little pause that had happened before the AV junction took over with its beat. So now let's talk about some characteristics of PJCs. So whenever you're looking at that rhythm overall with those random PJCs thrown in there, that overall rhythm is going to be irregular because those PJCs have prematurely occurred. However, on the underlying rhythm, it should be regular. The rates are going to vary depending on one type of rhythm you have underlying. And those P waves are going to have issues that we talked about earlier. However, the P waves on the underlying rhythm, they should be normal. Now your PR interval on the underlying rhythm should be normal. So we're talking about 0.12 to 0.20 seconds. However, with the PJC's PR interval, it may not even be there that you could even assess it because let's say the P waves behind the QRS or it's concealed, but sometimes it can appear in front of the QRS at PJC's, but it's going to be so close to that QRS complex that your PR interval will be less than 0.12 seconds. Your QRS complex should be normal, should be less than 1.2 seconds, but it's going to occur early whenever you have the PJC and the QT interval and the T wave will be normal. So here we have an example of a PJC. So we have our underlying rhythm as normal sinus rhythm with a couple PJCs that have decided to show up. So here we have sinus beat, sinus beat, and then bam, premature junctional contraction. And notice our little P wave there, he's inverted, and he's close to that QRS complex. So if you measure that PR interval, it's less than 0.12 seconds. It's about 0.12. One zero seconds. And then we have four more sinus speeds and then boom, all of a sudden we have another PJC. And look, it's P wave is concealed. It's hidden within that QRS complex. Now, what are the causes of PJCs? Well, remember this mnemonic I created, junction. So J is for junction. We're specifically talking about the AV junction. It has increased automaticity, and this can occur from digoxin toxicity. So this AV junction is just overly excited and it's just randomly throwing out these premature contractions. And this is actually one of the most common causes of PJCs, the digoxin toxicity. Using alcohol, node injury, we're talking about the AV node is damaged. This can happen due to surgery or infection, congenital defects in that junction, tobacco use, imbalance of electrolytes like potassium, calcium, or magnesium, oxygen deprivation, which could have occurred because a patient had myocardial infarction. We had limited blood flow to the heart, hence that nodal tissue in there, or hypoxia. And then lastly, it can occur naturally in some patients. So now let's talk about the treatment for PJCs. 
A lot of times PJCs are harmless because patients will just have them randomly and they don't have them frequently, so they're asymptomatic. They become a problem when you're having them frequently because it could lead to a lower cardiac output where your body's not being perfused with enough blood flow by your heart. And that can lead to symptoms like chest pain, palpitations, fluttering in the chest. If they were severe enough, it could even lower the blood pressure. So whenever that starts to happen, we start to get concerned. So we want to look for those potential causes. So try to recall the mnemonic junction and the healthcare provider will need to treat the causes. And we play a role with educating the patient because there are some modifiable factors that the patient can modify to help decrease these PJCs from occurring. So it could include smoking cessation, limiting alcohol intake, avoiding caffeine and balancing electrolyte levels. So making sure they're staying hydrated. Plus, look at their medication history. Are they on, let's say, maybe diuretics? Because that can really alter electrolyte levels. Now, let's say that you do notice these PJCs in your patient and you look at their medication history and they are taking digoxin. Well, you wanna notify the healthcare provider and they can order a digoxin level on them. A normal level is about 0.5 to 2 nanograms per milliliter. So anything greater, we can be in toxic territory. So you'd wanna hold the medication, see what the healthcare provider wants you to do. And then remember for testing purposes, what's the antidote for digoxin? It is Digifab. Okay, so that wraps up this review on PJCs. And if you'd like to test your knowledge on this material that we just learned, you can access a free quiz via the link in the description below.